Good evening and welcome to the coffee bar in my home. This is Joseph Brewer and I'm going over my book, The uh, Practical Guide for Church Ushers and Greeters. Tonight we're on um, episode five and uh, let's go ahead and jump right on in. Um, something I want to remind everybody is the things I suggest, the, the tips, suggestions, those things, uh, make sure that they uh, don't go against your pastor's wishes or your church protocols and procedures. So, you know, some, if, if I mention something that sounds good um, for you, for your, you know, your church, um, but you have any questions, run it by your pastor. Just, just make sure so uh, you don't cause yourself any grief. But uh, anyway, just, you know, do that. Um, we're continuing on with uh, ushering, but much of what we covered in greeting overlaps into ushering as well, because ushers are greeters um, as well as ushers. So um, those things that started out with in the first few sessions obviously apply to uh, ushers as well. One of the things I can't remember if I went over it, but as an usher, greet everyone that comes into your auditorium. I, sounds you know, kind of like a no-brainer, but um, there are a few things that it does. So if you have a guest that comes in, uh, somebody who could potentially be a threat, you want them to know that you see them. You want them to know that they didn't just slip in and nobody noticed them. Um, obviously, you want to be friendly anyway. So uh, make sure you greet everyone that comes into your auditorium. Let them know you're glad that they're there um, by, by greeting them. I mean, just the way you greet them is going to let them know that you're glad they're there. And um, it's, it's an important part of your ministry. Um, once the uh, auditorium starts to fill up, and great problem to have, by the way. Um, if your auditorium is so full that you're running out of seats, that's a great problem. So, but be prepared to give up your seat, um, you know, and, and do it quickly. Don't make somebody uh, sit there and feel like they're imposing by waiting for a seat when you, you know, if you've run out other places, give them your seat and stand. Um, you know, it's just, it, it, it's the right thing to do. And um, so just you know, look for that. Be ready for that. And praise God if it happens, because that means your church house is full and that's what you want. Um, so as people uh, during the preaching, you'll have people occasionally that will get up and to exit the building. Be ready to help them. You don't know why they're exiting the building. It could be a medical issue. Um, they may not, I mean, they may be feeling really badly and they could have a bloody nose, they might need to go to the restroom, uh, any number of things that could come up. So be prepared to help them. Um, that, that's part of your job. Now, if you have guys outside, um, you can, you know, escort them outside, do it discreetly, um, try not to disturb the service, and let the guys outside hand off to them and let them take care of um, whatever the issue is so that you can get back in and get back to your duties. And again, you want to do it discreetly, um, but just watch for those people. And, you know, it's, don't get angry with them for getting up um, during the preaching and going outside. You don't know what their reasoning is. You don't know what's going on in their lives. So at that moment, um, you know, we had one guy that walked out of the auditorium and his blood sugar was so low that he fell on the grass when he got outside. Uh, we, we had somebody else that came out with a bloody nose and others who have come out coughing and um, some sick to their stomach. So just be prepared to help. Be prepared to assist people who exit during the preaching. And like I said, don't get upset with them because, you know, you don't know what's going on with them. And something else, why you're sitting in there and it's easy to do, but um, you can get caught up in the preaching. And once you do that, um, you kind of shut down all your other senses and you, you quit listening. So stay alert, even during the preaching, um, you know, be listening for 
uh, those unusual noises, those indicators of problems, and um, you know, pay attention for those too. And, and it, like I said, it's easy to get focused on the preaching and kind of tune everything else out, but you do have a job to do even while the preaching is going on. So pay attention to that um, and try to stay alert. Um, it's sometimes tough because, I mean, you get some good preaching going and you really want to focus on what your pastor's saying or the guest speaker saying. And, you know, but you also have a job to do. So try and find that balance there where you can listen, but where you're still alert to um, be able to do your job and take care of things. Now, on that same subject, um, when your pastor says something or the guest speaker says something that uh, you find to be, um, you know, one of those true truths that, you know, really grabs you um, or uh, something that's just, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, that, that's fantastic. That's great stuff. Um, you know, support the sermon, support your pastor with an amen. Um, and a hearty amen is uh, a good way to go. It's, again, that's part of staying alert also, because, you know, sometimes we get into listening to the preaching, and we forget that, to some degree, um, we're participants in it by our body language, um, by how we're listening, because if you sit in there like this, listening to the preaching, um, people around you are going to go, oh, wow, you know, they're, it, it, the body language is going to tell people you're defensive, even if you don't intend to be, maybe you're just cold, but it's, it's going to affect um, others around you. So to some degree, you are an active participant in the preaching. Um, so your body language, how you conduct yourself, and again, uh, a hearty amen at an appropriate time, uh, good thing to do you know it it lets people know that hey you know it's a it's kind of an exclamation point to whatever your pastor just said and and you're showing support for what he said you're showing support for that sermon and that topic so um something to keep in mind and i find myself sometimes i get so focused on the preaching still um when i'm inside that um, my amens aren't as loud as I would like them to be. Um, and, uh, you know, probably not as loud as my pastor would like for them to be, but, um, I do, you know, I'm acknowledging the sermon, uh, from where I'm sitting by my body language, by my posture. Um, you know, I'm sitting in a position where, um, I am, you know, where you can tell I'm listening to the sermon. I'm listening to the preaching. I'm actively participating in it. So anyway, just something to think about, something to keep in mind. And um, those timely amens, they mean a lot um, to the people that are around, um, that are sitting around you and to your pastor as well, you know, supporting that ministry. So anyway, just, just keep that one in mind. Um, as an usher, now when you're taking up the offering, um, it, uh, you're going to have some guys that are going to walk faster than others. Some guys are going to walk slower than others. And so what we have done, um, is our ushers look to each other before they start down the aisle, then they keep pace with each other going down the aisle. So if one needs to slow down a little bit, one needs to pick up the pace a little bit so that they get to the front at the same time. Um, it just, it, it adds a little bit of coordinated professionalism to the ushers um, taking up the offering. So it, you know, and then we have an odd shaped building. Um, our, our building's kind of an L shape. So the ushers on one side of the building get halfway down until they can see the ushers from the other side are halfway down. And then they all proceed forward at the same time so that all four of those ushers arrive at the front at the same time. Um, so it it's a little thing, but where you can look for the places that you can, you know, elevate the professionalism and coordinated look of your ushers and ushering. Um, I don't know how much of a difference it makes to other people, but I'm always looking for ways that 
we can look more coordinated and more professional. So just something else to keep in mind. Um, I already went over one of the topics I'd planned on accidentally. So let me uh, move on to something else. Um, have an exit strategy. Okay, when I say that, what I mean is um, after the preaching's over, when um, everything's done, the prayers are done, and people are beginning to exit the building, have a strategy for that moment. What are you going to do? How are you going to conduct yourself? Where are you going to be? Um, make sure you're there. Um, if you're at a door, and make sure you're there to greet people. And as they're exiting, greet them. Um, let them know you're glad they were there. Um, if it's a guest, let them know that, you know, if you have food next door or something, um, take them over to the food. Or if you have somebody there that you can introduce them to, hand them off to, um, that they can go and take them to the food, uh, you can do that as well. But um, don't just leave them hanging um, as people are leaving. Um, again, it, it's just, it's one more opportunity for you to have an effect in the lives of the people uh, in your building. Um, so, you know, take them to the food. Uh, you know, maybe they need to go pick up somebody or go meet somebody uh, and you can help with that. You know, it's just, it's one more of those things. Um, you know, they're, 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 it's a lot of little things add up to making a difference. So, um, you know, it's, it's that opportunity if there's, uh, maybe they need assistance. Um, you know, maybe they need to uh, exit and, you know, use the uh, a ramp or something if you have one, or um, they don't, maybe they don't even know when the next service is. Uh, you know, it's particularly guests, invite them back to the next service. Let them know when it is. If it's, you know, if it's a guest that you're not sure that uh, they have all that information, then um, as they're leaving, you know, thank them for coming. Um, and, and, you know, maybe they've been there three or four times, but they were at a different part of the building. And you didn't see them. That's okay. Um, go ahead and, and say hello to them. Make sure they know when the next service is. Invite them back. Uh, welcome them. You, you want them back for the next service. So um, it's just one more of those things that uh, you get, you have an opportunity to do um, towards the end of the day um, as uh, with greeters, as uh, people are exiting. Something else that uh, is a great opportunity uh, for ushers at times is serving communion. It uh, now I'm not sure how all churches do it. In our church, it's our uh, deacons that serve uh, our communion, and um, but it you know a lot of our deacons are ushers, so it's a it it's just it's one more. Um, it's one more great opportunity. Um, and um, it's, it's an opportunity to just stop. And, you know, while you're, while you're serving communion, um, to reflect on the, on the things that Jesus has done for you and done in your life. Um, so it's, uh, um, you know, take, take those moments, think about those things as you have opportunity. And keep in mind, too, that if you're serving communion, it's like handling food in a restaurant. People are expecting cleanliness and sanitation. So with us, we wear um, gloves when we do it. We, you know, we have the uh, uh, nitrile gloves that we wear. And so we make sure that people are comfortable taking food from us. And um, we don't want anybody being concerned about something, you know, like, like that when we can avoid it. And um, anyway, it, the, the cleanliness of it is an important attribute. So pay attention to that. Take the opportunities that you can to consider Christ during that time, because that's what it is. It, it's a remembrance of him. And um, anyway, just one more of those little things that uh, when you have the opportunity to do it, it, it's a tremendous blessing for you to do. Now, as you, as an usher, your duties uh, may change or evolve. Um, it's uh, like the pandemic. Now, 
I, I have no doubt that there will be another pandemic come our way, more lockdowns that they will try and impose on us and things like that. So when those things happen, when um, unforeseen things like that happen, you're going to have to um, change to some degree and um, evolve in your ministry a bit. So what I mean by that is during the pandemic um, and during the lockdowns, my church never stopped. We, we never stopped having services. Um, we never quit preaching. Um, my pastor uh, was convinced, and I believe rightly so, that the only person who has the authority to shut down a church and to stop the preaching is God himself. A uh, pastor doesn't have the authority or right to shut down his church um, and stop preaching. So we, um, we continued on through the entire pandemic. We continued on through the lockdowns. And, um, but we tried to do it in a way where um, we did, we let people social distance. Um, we, you know, we tried to, we grouped families together um, and, you know, but so trying to accommodate them because my thinking is I want everybody there. Um, I, I, let, let's get them all there. And there's going to be some people who are very uncomfortable and fear is a very hard thing uh, for people to overcome. So let's do what we can, um, whatever those little things are. Um, to help people feel more comfortable during situations like that. So you, you're going to have to make some uh, minor changes. You, maybe it's, you know, a fist bump instead of a handshake, depending on the person. And, um, you know, you're going to have to read each person um, pretty much individually, unless you know them very well. Um, myself, I didn't quit shaking hands with people. And if they wanted to shake my hand, I, I wasn't going to deny that because um, I I love greeting them. I love seeing them, um, shaking their hands and saying hello to them. Um, it means a lot to me. And, um, you know, I hope I make a difference in their lives um, as I'm greeting them and welcoming them. So um, just be prepared to make adjustments, changes, um, and to accommodate people to some degree without compromising uh, the ministry, without um, doing things that might be wrong, you know, don't, don't do those things, but find the things you can do to help people feel comfortable, you know, like sitting them in family groups, social distancing them with necessary. Um, we had an overflow area set up for people and, you know, so and when the overflow was going, um, I made sure to go over there and talk to the people when I had the chance, just to let them know that they weren't forgotten, um, that just because others were inside, that we still remembered they were there, and we were glad they were there. Um, I wanted to see everybody on the property that we could get on our property. So um, anyway, just plan for... Um, making those little changes and, you know, uh, try and be a blessing to folks, even in tough times like that. Now, one of the other things is I consider them tools of your trade as an usher. And that is I carry a flashlight in my pocket all the time. And I've used it frequently um, in the evening, even during the day, we've used it. Uh, like if somebody had a problem with their car or something so they could see, um, underneath the hood, but I carry a small uh, AAA flashlight in my pocket, and it's I. You'd be surprised how many times you can use it. Now, yes, our phones have flashlights, but you know, having that little flashlight that you know you can hold in your mouth if you need to, so both your hands are free. Uh, being able to shine in the bushes, you know, outside looking for somebody's keys in the grass in the dark that you know they may have dropped you know, those kinds of things. So a little flashlight, great tool of the trade to have. Um, keys, 
to the uh, um, various areas of the church property. If you have keys, make sure you have them with you. You're prepared to go open things for people and let them have access to the areas that they're welcome to. Um, so just it, one of those tools, it's just your keys are again, they're tools and um, cough drops, cough drops. You should probably carry cough drops with you all the time you're at church. Um, it's, uh, you know, I frequently have people come and ask me for a cough drop. They've got a little bit of a scratchy throat, a little bit of a sore throat, um, a little bit of a cough. So you're helping the ministry, you're helping the preaching by making somebody a little more comfortable with just something so simple as a cough drop. So I carry a handful in my pocket, um, in my jacket pocket that I can hand out. And um, like I said, I've, frequently I have people asking me for a cough drop and, you know, I'm glad to oblige. So one more thing that you can carry, one more thing that you can do uh, to just that, you know, again, it's just, it's those little things that you can do to be a blessing for people. Uh, tissue, if you don't carry a handkerchief um, or tissue, make sure you know where there's some tissue at that's close by. If you have to, go buy a box and put it in your area where you usher so that if somebody needs a tissue, um, maybe they're moved, greatly moved by the preaching and they need a tissue to dry their tears or they have a bloody nose or something like that. Just be prepared with a tissue or uh, your handkerchief to be able to help somebody out with that. Also, our phones have become a tool, um, but they're also a distraction. So be careful with the phone. I mean, most of us have Bible apps on our phones, have flashlights on our phones. And for me, it's also how my ushers um, that are outside, if I'm inside, it's how my ushers outside can reach me if there's a problem or a question about something going on out there and, and vice versa. If there's something, if I need somebody inside to uh, take care of something for me, I can text them and have them do it, but you know, they can be a real big distraction as well. So try to avoid uh, the distraction part of it. Try not to sit there and check your email or <laughs> scores for your you know whatever your team is um i had to turn off the uh um notifications for my hockey team so that i wasn't getting updates for a game during the preaching because i don't want to be i don't want my concentration broken um during the preaching by notifications on my phone that i don't you know that that don't apply to the ministry at the moment so but I do need my phone on me. I do need my phone um, on so that I can communicate with my ushers as they need me. And also something I suggest with your phone is if you don't have it, get the uh, dispatch number for your local police department so that if something comes up, um, that isn't a 911 call, but you need to call the police, you have the dispatch number readily available um, on your phone so that uh, you can call, you know, if there's an accident or something um, up the street or anything like that, where you can be of a help by calling the police, um, you know, have that number accessible. And if you're the head usher, make sure all your ushers have the dispatch number for the police. So um, with that, we'll wrap up this evening. And if you have any questions, again, um, you can reach me at akajoebrewer.com. Uh, there's a contact section there and you can, you know, if you have any questions, suggestions, uh, thoughts, you know, reach out to me there. Let me know. I'd appreciate it. And let's pray. Father, thank you for this opportunity again, that we could gather, um, that we could consider ushering as a ministry and the ways that we can be a blessing to folks. I pray that you would just bless the ushers in churches across the world and around the world that, uh, you would use them to be a blessing to folks and um, pray that you would protect them, guide them, watch over them, and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a good night. Thank you.